happy to have you back to join us uh, in this new year. It's 2019. We have a special show for you today. Just by way of a uh, quick introduction, uh, we have resources online for all of our videos, uh, podcasts over the last year are available. And so you can find these at the, the uh, Facebook group, Ask an Addiction Specialist. You can also find them on YouTube. I hear that they're very accessible on YouTube and also available at uh, one of our sponsor sites, which is Beginnings Treatment Centers. Beginnings Treatment Centers and Therapy Cable uh, sponsor our podcasts every week. I'm in here in the studio with Austin Armstrong and Odie Martinez just back from uh, holidays. We're very happy to be with you here. It's a Wednesday morning. We typically, we don't meet on Wednesday afternoon, but we have a special guest that makes us happy to come in in the morning. Our guest is Dr. Tomas Rudy. Uh, uh, I've known Tomas now for uh, a, a good couple of years, and we're going to be looking at uh, his area, one of his areas of expertise, which is integrative holistic approaches to health and recovery. I'd like to introduce Tomas, uh, first of all, just personally, and then we're going to dive into a dialogue today. Tomas is coming in from Switzerland today, so it's wonderful to have you with us, Tomas. Um, uh, Tomas is, a, is a, uh, a man of many talents and many gifts, and I've gotten to know uh, many of these gifts over the last couple of years of our friendship. Tomas, first of all, is a dentist, but a very specific kind of dentist. He operates as a holistic dentist and is very involved in that movement. In fact, has a book out, and I brought it with me, Tomas. <laughs> Zähne ganzheitlich behandeln. It's in German. <laughs> yeah. I highly recommend this book. I love the images. And one day I'd like to understand the German as well. But we're working on getting this translated into English. But just for you to know, this is uh, one, one very uh, strong component of, of Dr. Rudy's um, uh, uh, many gifts is his work in holistic dentistry. Uh, that's actually less of where we have spent time together over the last several years. We have talked about holistic or integral approaches to health, and we'll be talking into that today with, with Tomas. Tomas brings other backgrounds that I think are very relevant. One is that he has deep, deep expertise in, in Tibetan Buddhism, uh, specifically Dokchen uh, uh, Buddhism, and uh, it provides a basis for our talking about wisdom in which it's not not just out of textbooks, but out of born out of uh, years and years of his own uh, deep experience, including multiple journeys to India and deep training. Uh, um, another area that that Tomas brings that we may well get into today is his taking leadership in Switzerland, uh, uh, locally and regionally in the men's movement, very involved in addressing men's issues with uh, training experiences, ongoing groups, and such, and uh, he brings uh, great depth in terms of addressing uh, a, a, a men's perspective on health, on recovery, on growth, on spirituality. And then finally, an area that has arisen for Tomas and I together over the last year, year and a half or so, and he has gone very deeply into this area. I don't think that Tomas does anything halfway. <laughs> I hope that's fair to say, is the area of, uh, uh, of high sensitivity. Uh, this is an area that came, uh, the, the research came out after I finished graduate school, and I somehow missed school the day that they introduced this idea. And uh, owing to the work that I do, uh, specifically now working with particularly uh, men and women who are uh, in early recovery from oftentimes severe addiction, uh, I'm struck again and again by how many of the clients that I work with themselves would qualify as being highly sensitive individuals. And so this, this literature uh, is the, uh, the, the big name in this literature is the, is the woman who started this research, Elaine Aron, A-R-O-N. And there have been all kinds of studies done since then here, both in the States as well as in Europe. And Tomas is fully articulate with this literature as well. So that's a bit of an introduction to Tomas as we begin to look, uh, as we move into the new year of looking at holistic approaches to health, to medicine, to dentistry, and to recovery. All right, Tomas, how is that for an introduction as we start today? Oh, wow. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that 
I have all these skills, but uh, <laughs> thank you anyway to, yeah. to, yeah. Yeah, you're very welcome. I could go on and on with the list. I didn't include the fact that Tomas has huge depth in music as well. He comes from a musical family, and he shares some of his musical gifts with me. We could we could go on and on with the, the many contributions our friendship has, has been to me, Tomas. Um, I'd like to, uh, let me say one more word, Tomas, before we begin, and that is, is I want to invite our, our viewers today to feel free to participate. You can send in comments and questions uh, through the Facebook uh, group uh, uh, in the chat uh, function. You can also do it through YouTube. Invite you to interact with, with Austin and Odie here in the, in the studio, and they'll, they'll forward those questions to me and, and, uh, and to Tomas. And so I want to invite you uh, to engage with us in real time as well, okay? So Tomas, let's, let's uh, start maybe just by talking a little bit about what you see as the value of a holistic or integrative approaches to life, let's say. And let's just see where we want to go. I'll, I'll, I'll help us along, but I'd just love to hear from you to begin with. Yeah, all right. I, I think um, basically if you, if we live in this world, um, we hope to contribute to, to any, any, any level of this world. It's important what um, what kind of quality this this should have or is supposed to have, <clears throat> and um, as we can see everywhere in in the world, um, if 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 this the perspective you use to to um, approach something is very narrow, um, the result is is very narrow too. So. Um, I think there has been many times in 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 in, in these last centuries um, people have been, um, um, you know, s seeing that a holistic view or all this holistic um, way to 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 look at things are much more valuable and 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 gives a lot a lot a, a lot of uh, more results that we can really step on you know and it's not it's not just a dream you know yeah yeah, yeah. thank you uh, for that introduction tomas i wonder when you think of holistic what kinds of things come to mind i think our viewers will be uh, especially those that have been with us for a while will be familiar because i've shared some from integral theory for example but i'd i'd like to open it up However, you'd like to address it, uh, Tomas, in terms of looking at holistic. What makes a holistic perspective holistic? What goes into that, from your from your view? I think basically it's it's the view to that you try to be able to see and 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 in, um, um, invite anything you can see or smell or or, or experience. Uh, to have to have a, a full picture of what it is. I mean, what whatever you you encounter or what, whatever you are looking for answers, it's it's good to know, you know how how broad it is, and 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 from there, I mean, of course, then as as my on one of my backgrounds is. is is holistic medicine you, you can bring it bring it down into into medical um, in a medical view of how can we help how can we you know help people in a medical sense and there um, I think I think what is very very important is to to know something about um, what what it means holistic medicine in general? Yeah, yeah. I'd I'd love to to uh, hear you describe something that you and I have spoken of. I've yet to come visit you. You've invited me, and I will come visit you one day. But I know that in your in your office or your clinic, 
uh, uh, locally uh, there in Switzerland that you that you have a multidisciplinary approach even to the uh, you, the staff that you have in your clinic. I'd love to have you comment, if you would, on what makes your work as a dentist holistic, and also be very interested for you to share a little bit about just your your uh, your office or your your business model in terms of having this multidisciplinary staff that that provide services to your patients. So anything that you would like to comment on holistic dentistry, including how you apply it professionally, would be of great interest to me. I think um, holistic dentistry starts when you know and you get to the knowledge um, that the the oral area is is one of the most complex and most interesting reflex zones area in in the body. Mm. So mm. there are, there are many there are many descriptions about this, and so we can say in in our in our um, how I say mouth or oral region, mm -hmm. we have our body, you know. We have our body like eight times as a, as as areas um, um, in there. So I mean, so then mostly there are two two ways to to approach this. One approach is that is there is a patient coming to see me that is a, that has a chronic sickness. And, and we have the, we are looking at, at first in his oral area to see how this disease is expressing itself in these reflex zones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is what we, we often see is people um, um, coming with a specific problem in their oral area. And we find out that from there, there are, you know, places that, that um, um, the, the whole body is, is, is afflicted, you know, or is, yeah. is you know. And um, yeah, that, that's, I think that's the main thing about, about holistic dentistry, mm -hmm. to, to, to know and to understand and to, I mean, I've seen this m many years now. To somehow you 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 can see this person when when the uh, mouth is getting open, you can see it, and you can see things this person won't know or won't tell. You know? Yes, <laughs> and, yes. And then we can work. Um, <laughs> and uh, our community office, as as we say, is. Um, is is just an idea to uh, to bring some of these experts in in like holistic medicine together, mm -hmm. and um, uh, but I think one one very important um, point about holistic um, and integrative 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 mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. medicine is that we we do both we do Western medicine yes. and we do complementary medicine mm -hmm. the same time um, mm -hmm. and and that's I think that gives the the broadness of mm -hmm. of of the choice we can make with with what what of these tools are we going to work. Yes, yes, yeah. As I'm listening to you, thank you. As as I'm listening to you, I'm I'm think I'm comparing it to uh, a a couple of um, work experiences that I have right now that are parallel. One is at Beginnings Treatment Centers here locally. I mentioned them earlier. They're one of our sponsors. Is that there's very much of an appreciation for body, mind, and spirit, even as we're dealing with addiction, and uh, and. Uh, there's a lot of seriousness taken for 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 physical health, including exercise and diet and sleep and all of those things. That that goes into um, addressing uh, uh, recovery, as well as my focus is primarily on the psychological and somewhat on the spiritual. And so there's there there's an appreciation and uh, an inviting in 
of a psychological perspective on addiction and recovery. And then finally, I mentioned spirituality. There's a lot of focus on spirituality here in the United States, particularly with the 12-step movements that really look at addiction from primarily from a spiritual perspective. And then in the same spirit as you were saying with, with your approach to being both Western and complementary, it's, it, it's this idea of body plus mind plus spirit that you don't you don't exclude any perspective, and there are other perspectives as well, but that's just for shorthand. Um, I have to say also, Tomas, as I was listening to you, I'm quite sure I have never worked here in the United States with a holistic dentist. I have worked with a couple of holistic physicians, and in fact now, um, actually professionally, am working with a holistic physician locally who has hired me to bring in the psychological component as we're working with his patients. He works with patients to detox them. His background is, is as an endocrinologist, as a physician, but he very much operates from a functional medicine perspective, which would be very much what you're saying using Western medicine, using complementary medicine uh, as well, uh, homeopathic remedies and so on. He's doing all of that and fully embracing. I don't think I've ever worked closely with a physician who's so respectful of my contribution from a psychological perspective as I feel towards him. It's, it's completely hand in glove for us. And so very much in the spirit of what you're saying. So I have worked with holistic physicians, but I have not worked with a, a, I've never seen a dentist who does what I believe you do with every one of your patients, which is look at them holistically. The way you were just talking about affliction in the body and how that might manifest uh, dentally. I don't think I've ever seen a, a dentist who operates that way. It makes me think I need to find a new dentist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I, w I would love to, uh, as we kind of kind of laid this out, I'd love to, to find out what kinds of recommendations you make to patients of yours that are coming in. And let's say they come in presenting, uh, uh, like you mentioned, a chronic dental illness. What kinds <clears throat> of recommendations you might make to them that would represent more of a holistic approach to treatment? Would you be willing to speak to that? <clears throat> Yeah, it's important to first to um, what we mostly do is first just have a look uh, into the oral area, all the teeth area. We do all the, like, as you say, the, the Western medicine approach, we do x-rays, we do anything to know what is going on in there yes. and um, to have... Um, uh, a very specific view or picture about what is what is in there and where could be uh, coming troubles from, you know. Yes. And then the second is what we what we offer is then to to have a quite a large part of of checkup would I would say or diagnostic checkup in the complementary area with three or four, four different uh, systems we use. It's, it's bioelectric or bioenergetic um, um, mm -hmm. um, systems we use. And then in the end, we what we do is we, we bring all this together and, and then talk. And I, I mean, this is the really interesting part, you know, mm -hmm. as I, you know, when you as now myself having sort of 30 years of, you know, uh, working experience, it's nice to, sometimes you can see how the, how these details uh, fit together to a, to a picture. And, yeah. and then um, it is possible to talk to the patient, you know, what, what we recommend is, is, you know, what is very uh, obvious and, and, what what would be the plan to go along or what is the perspective we have and, and, and all these things, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really like very much, have great respect for your bringing both both the, the traditional conventional Western medical approach along with complementary or alternative approaches and that you bring those together. There's, there's a piece where my curiosity goes right now, and it's a slight shift, and I want to know if you'd be willing to talk into 
how, um, how you understand the spiritual dimension, particularly in terms of your own background, and how that informs your work either within yourself or actually in the conversations with your, with your clients. And I'll say a little bit more before I leave you with that question, is that I've found increasingly working with the individuals I'm working with who are in recovery from addiction is, yeah. that, is that for many of them, for many of them, they, 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 we live our lives kind of uh, captured by, by, uh, by what psychologists call the ego, and that, that sometimes the ego or the self becomes part of the problem, and any solution that doesn't address the ego's attachments, the ego's drives, the ego's compulsions may not go deep enough in terms of addressing what needs to be addressed in recovery. So it, for me, uh, it, there's a natural entry point into including, uh, at least here in the States, there's a lot of work being done with mindfulness and mm -hmm. meditative approaches to help people to be able to manage kind of just the day-to-day -day way of, that they think. And I wonder if, in terms of your own uh, rich and deep background in spiritual resources, how that comes to bear in the work that you do uh, in medical dentistry, Tomas, if you'd be willing to comment on that. Yeah, I think there, there, there might be quite some, some, uh, some points. Um, uh, the one that I want to bring up first is... Um, um, as I received um, in Tibetan Buddhism, you receive like uh, something you, we call empowerment. Okay. And then uh, mm -hmm. I ha I was lucky to to get some some empowerment about Medicine Buddha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if you if you know it. Can, can you say more about that? <laughs> Medicine Buddha is is a special Buddha that is um, is you know helping to cure diseases and uh, mm. and uh, yeah i mean it's it's it, it will be a broad issue <laughs> to me but what i wanted to tell you is is uh, what i try to do when i go into the, the to into the, the the viewing of of the of the case you know in 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 its its own in in, in its big um um you know how it is put together. Um, I learned to somehow to to com to combine myself with Medicine Buddha, mm -hmm. you know, and to have a to have a certain a different kind of view when when I do this. You know, mm -hmm. it might be sounding funny for for some of you, but mm -hmm. it. It, it's it there is something that there's something different if if you are connected with one of these yes. yeah. it, it, of these goddesses whatever religion is it is about it it, it, it wouldn't wouldn't really matter huh? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is one thing and and then I can then when when I connect with this and and in my office I have a huge tanka you know tanka is a is a is a picture you know painted mm -hmm. Um, a picture that hangs on the hangs is hanging on the wall, mm -hmm. um, and, and and anyway, it's it's I think it's in in this room when where we can work on these issues. Um, mm -hmm. um, there there is a certain atmosphere that if it's if it if it really fits to the patient too, mm -hmm. it opens up a room of of of. Mm -hmm. of of an understanding of things mm -hmm. they might have been hidden before, mm -hmm. and um, and and what I do is then I I feel like a, like somebody who is trying to to bring this into words what yeah. what can change and what what part might be good to to come over or to. And if if we speak holistic, it's mm -hmm. it's we, we, we will speak not only about teeth, you know, <laughs> but we will speak about the whole life and mm -hmm. and, and the situation uh, this person is into and uh, and anything, you know. Yes, yeah. 
I feel like I'm right with you, Tomas. I really appreciate you talking about this in terms of medicine Buddha. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I was thinking of, and I would love to have you uh, respond. Is um, I mentioned this in a recent podcast. Just a few weeks ago, there was a, a, a man not much uh, younger than myself who's early in recovery. As we were going into one of the groups that I lead at the treatment center, he said, he said um, I want to know what your secret is. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, I, I'm not sure what you, what you mean, what my secret is. And, and he said, the secret to why you smile so much. <laughs> so I asked him for permission. I said, can we use this as a discussion point to start today's group? He agreed to that. And so we did. And we began to speak into that. And in fact, I asked the group, I asked the group, why do you think I smile so much? <laughs> And people had different responses to that, but it led to our talking into something. And I don't think it's so different than what you're saying right now, Tomas, is yeah. that, uh, uh, that I know how deeply committed you are to spiritual development and growth and have been for uh, virtually your entire life. And I, I think the same is true for me. And I do know for, in psychology, there's been a lot written about this and perhaps in dentistry as well is that, that it doesn't matter nearly so much what I say. For example, what theory I use as a, as a therapist or a, or a counselor as much as who I am. And who I am, it feels like to me, is a function of years and years of commitment uh, to developing and, uh, and uh, to a, a lot of grace, I want to say, a lot of generosity. Most of the clients I deal with come from a Judeo-Christian background, and so they'll talk about this in terms of the Holy Spirit or other, uh, other biblical terms. You come from a different uh, spiritual tradition in terms of Buddhism, and they will have a language for this. But it's, it's, it's uh, the language, I, I, I fully agree with something you said, the language is less essential than than what is essential, which is this that underlies language. And I'm, I'm really gratified. It makes me very happy to imagine the work that you do, that you convey it out of the huge spirit that you are. I've had a chance to know you now for these last two years, and I experience that, uh, that uh, depth that you bring. And, and I think that's what this man was asking, or was, you know, saying, what's my secret? I don't own the secret, that's for sure, but I think the secret comes through me, and I'm very grateful for that. And today, like most every day, I start my day by cultivating that. So when I come into my work today, in fact, I leave today to go lead a group with this man in it. <laughs> and so I get to be with you, Tomas, and before we're together, I get to be in silence and uh and uh, uh, meditation and prayer. And, and I think that that informs the work as much as all of the technical knowledge that, that I might have. Uh, I, like you, have been at this for a long time now, um, about 40 years, and I'm grateful for all of that technical knowledge. But I don't think that that's what this guy was asking about the other day when he said what my secret was. I don't think he was asking, what's the secret to all of your technical knowledge? It's this other dimension. It's something that you and I've talked about recently, Tomas, and I wonder if we might speak into it. And maybe we don't. I don't know. But it was this whole topic yeah. of wisdom, about mm. you know what is wisdom, and and uh, and dare we even try to describe wisdom? I wonder if you have any thoughts or remarks about that topic. Yeah. So, um, I mean, out of the of the view of the. Asian traditions, or like Buddhism, or whatever, um, what they can see when you, when they come to to Western um, into the West, yes, they see there's 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 incredible knowledge, mm. and, um, mm -hmm. and um, in in many many ways, and 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 therefore also. Very nice buildings, very you know, lots of, lots of um, food, anything you could you could think of. But what 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 they say, and I mean, I was I, I was able to talk to quite a higher Rinpoche about this sometimes, you know, 
this is a this is a spiritual leader in in the Tibetan tradition. Yes. He's saying what 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 he's what he's looking for is the is where is the wisdom, mm. and he's saying, of course, it doesn't mean that there is no wisdom, but it seems to be somehow hidden underneath, you know, um, heaps of 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 uh, materialistic stuff or or, mm. or careers or or whatever. It's um, so that, that it's 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 quite a difference to 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 see something from the point of view of the knowledge of 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 knowing something about or having learned about something, mm-hmm. then to the to to uh, wisdom mm-hmm. to come to the to the to the really um, ground of. These wisdom traditions. That's. I think that's a very nice. This is a very nice. Uh, I say, word for uh, for what what all of the big um, spiritual traditions are about. It's is it, they are wisdom traditions, or they have been. And and in what what we can see is. Um, um, yeah, there is not a lot, not life, in, of this spiritual, you know, wisdom here. Mm-hmm. But there is a lot of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go to Asia and, and certain parts in in the world, you will feel you you'll find the opposite. There is there is lots lots of wisdom. Mm-hmm. And and this is nothing that that has nothing about you know. Being learned, you can you can even go into into the high mountains area and, and ask a, an elderly person about something you know, and they will give you full wisdom, you know. Yes. And uh, so, so um, and, and on the other hand, you know, there is there is not a lot of you know technical uh, knowledge there, and so so. So both can can give each other something, you know. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. So so that's why I feel sometimes a little bit lost here, you know, with with this kind of wisdom view within a world that I mean, within fake news and fake whatever, and you you don't know what is what is true anymore. Mm-mm. I appreciate all that you're saying, Tomas. I know that you know that I'm a kindred spirit um, for sure when we talk about this. A couple of thoughts came to my mind as I was listening closely to Tomas. Uh, I started graduate school um, uh, 40 years ago in 1979. (laughs) I started graduate school 40 years ago, and I remember in that first year of courses, we we took a, a, a course on psychological assessment where we were trained to assess intelligence is what they called it. And I remember the definition for intelligence. I was a much younger man. I was 23 years old. I remember the definition for intelligence struck me as odd, even then at age 23. And it was this, intelligence was being defined as speed of information processing. How quickly can you process information. And you can see the value in that. There's certainly great value in that. But I remember sitting there uh, in that class, that very class, I can still picture it, and thinking in my mind, what's missing with this definition, at least to me, is another dimension. And I would, and I, and I, in my mind, just in my mind, I didn't speak this out loud. In my mind, I thought what's missing is depth. Hmm. So there's speed of information processing, which I imagine to be horizontal you know, like you speeding horizontally. But I imagine the vertical dimension of depth uh, matters at least as much as as the horizontal, and it wasn't being discussed. Then it was about 10 years later or so that I was introduced to the work of a a psychologist at Harvard, Howard Gardner, who developed what was, came to be called the theory of multiple intelligences. And at last I felt some relief And what Howard Gardner looked at was that most tests of intelligence that psychologists like me are trained to give 
test speed of information processing in certain domains, uh, verbal, quantitative, maybe logic, a few different domains that you test to see how fast somebody is with, for example, uh, uh, coming up with the correct uh, answer to an equation, for example, in math. But he said that those are just two or three of, of uh, lines of intelligence, and he described up to 24 different types of intelligence, and he actually said they're quite infinite. But he included other dimensions of intelligence, which since that time, uh, in the last 20 to 30 years, have actually developed more and more attention in not only in psychology, but also in business and other applications. So for example, he described emotional intelligence. How intelligent is somebody in terms of processing their own inner world? He talked about social intelligence or interpersonal intelligence. How skilled is somebody at managing relationships? But there was one that he included that has been the most of interest to me and, it, and it's spiritual intelligence. And psychology has had the least to say about this because psychology has a hard time studying things that you can't weigh and measure. And that gets us into what we're talking about right now. And I don't think that they're necessarily to be reduced one to the other, but spiritual intelligence, and you might add moral intelligence, these things matter greatly in terms of our lives. And they, because they're not so easily measured or weighed or quantified, they tend to be less emphasized in psychology. And I would say that that's also accidental insofar as they tend to be given less importance culturally. I can speak here more for U.S. culture. I won't speak for Swiss culture or European culture. But to talk about the depth dimension, including spirituality and even morality, um, is less the emphasis in a very uh, materialistic culture, also a culture that is very much in a hurry. We want to get, get places fast. So yes, we're very interested in the speed of information processing, but the idea of needing to pause and to go deeply is less emphasized culturally for sure, and it gets picked up in our scientific disciplines such as psychology. So anyway, I thought of that as you were speaking, and I'd love to hear if you have any further thoughts about this domain that tends to get ignored, maybe in, in Western culture. Yeah. Um... I wanted to say is if 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 you go on you know the background of like Tibetan Buddhism or Dzogchen I, I'm coming from if you get the closer you get to to wisdom the more silent it will be you know mm. and I think the, the the greatest wisdom is there mm. where there is no thoughts mm. and there is a, there is like a quality of choicelessness so so there there might be there might be you know there might be um, a part of us that is that is watching and, and listening deep but to 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 watch deep and listen deep the most important thing is silence you know but silence is is not is not nothing Silence is is all, you know, and I think that's that's completely opposite to what we have learned in in our uh, you know schools or universities, you know, because it's 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 quite tough to 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 do scientific working work work on si silence, no, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and and there there I think. Um, this is different. A, a, a different. This is something different. It's it's both valuable and both as in the integral. You told me, you um, you know, everything has has its place where it fits and where it is meaningful. But if there is something very tiny on a place, means that this is wisdom. It has, you know, it represents, mm -hmm. and you have to say that, that this is not the case, <laughs> mm -hmm. because, because the wisdom is everything, you know, mm -hmm. and this this is something very, very, very spe special that is happening if you study and, and 
and, and practice uh, one of these great wisdom traditions in depth, mm -hmm. you will end up uh, being in into the into the silence where where the most where 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 wisdom is where wisdom lives. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for for bringing in silence. Um, I, I, we've never spoken of this, Tomas, but about 25 years ago, I had an opportunity to chair a doctoral dissertation in in the, the uh, psychology program where I was teaching. This student did his entire dissertation on the topic of silence mm. uh, in psychotherapy. And he wrote a three or 400 page <laughs> dissertation on silence, which, which is pretty amazing <laughs> to pull off. And most of his references were to poetry and to art. There was not so much in psychology per se, but I've never forgotten two things that Stephen uh, uh, asserted. He says, there is silence that stirs. For example, there's silence that's uncomfortable. And I think in Western society, uh, at least here in the U.S., because of the because of the emphasis on hurrying, and really in some ways the emphasis on noise, we've got to be busy, we've got to be noisy, we've got to hurry. That 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 any kind of silence is felt as uncomfortable. But there's another kind of silence, and Stephen, it's Dr. Stephen Beasley's dissertation I'm speaking of, that just as much as silence can stir us to discomfort, he says there's the silence that settles. The silence that settles, and there's more the sense of just settling down into silence. And I believe that's what you're speaking of, where you go down and down and down into silence. And Stephen talked about this in terms of psychotherapy, the value of being able just to sit in that latter silence that just settles and to hold that. I have to tell you a story, Tomas. This is probably 15 or 20 years ago. I was working with my psychotherapist, Don, and I came in to see him one day. I only did this one time in the course of psychotherapy with him. I asked him if he'd be willing to sit with me in silence for an hour. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> so I saw him for an hour and I paid him for an hour and he sat with me in silence. It meant so much to me just to create a space in which I could be with another human being that I loved as much as this man and to hold silence together in the spirit that we're talking about, allowing silence to inform our relationship. I've never forgotten that. I think that may be one of the most valuable psychotherapy sessions I ever had was spent in complete silence by choice. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's, it's a, we, we always, we always about, uh, talk about, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the the silence that is this coming out of not 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 talking but there is a there's a nonverbal um, kind of uh, communication that's there you know yeah. and I think uh, that kind of nonverbal um, communication is is uh, many times it's uh, it's much more valuable than 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 having verbal communication, mm -hmm. we might we might more try to sit with something and then speak about it afterwards. So yes. it might be quite a difference the the result or the what what is coming up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You remind me of something, Tomas. Uh, starting. Uh, probably, I don't know, 20 or 25 years ago when I was teaching. Most of my teaching has been with graduate students in psychology. And so you might think on the one hand that they would be comfortable with what we're talking about in terms of silence or more broadly wisdom. But I remember uh, noticing it that I would sometimes pause as I was teaching and uh, students would, and I would just pause for a few seconds and students would feel uncomfortable and some students would feel like that I lost my train of thought or I don't know what they thought exactly, but students would say, are you okay? And I would say, I'm fine. I'm, I'm just pausing to think. And it began to be kind of a, a source of humor where students would realize that when Dr. Bob pauses, it's because he's thinking. It doesn't seem that radical, does it, that you would pause to think, but it 
can be, at least in classes that I taught. And now that's transferred into the work I do leading groups. I lead about eight groups a week um, uh, with clients that are in early recovery. And I'll oftentimes, I don't do it on purpose, I'll just pause when it seems like something's been said that needs to be kind of held in silence, or maybe I'm thinking of something, or maybe I'm waiting, you know. And the same thing, it will, until clients get to know me, they'll, they'll feel like there's something wrong with the silence, and uh, there's rarely anything wrong with the silence from my perspective. And once they get to know me, they can kind of be okay with it, and sometimes they'll just snicker and they'll go, Oh, Bob's thinking again. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think that this is this is not very common anymore. That um, we, we we just you know the more important the issue is, the more it would would be very helpful sometimes to just meditate it. You know, yeah. the the. Uh, we are used to 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 talk to anything. Yeah. And, um, yeah. If if we if we sit with something and talk after it, we will we will probably use about ten times less words. You know. Yes. Yes. And then, um, yeah, and 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 it, it would be very authentic and and true. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate what you're saying. Tomas, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, begin to wind down now, uh, and and I'll, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I really, I feel completely at peace right now. I hope that you do too, in our interacting. Uh, this I I really appreciate our bringing in what we've talked about, and it's a unique contribution to this podcast series to actually hold a space for wisdom and to honor silence just the way that you've been speaking. So I thank you deeply for that. And my thought is rather than trying to cram more material in today, as I wonder if we might invite you back um, uh, in the not so distant future where we might discuss some other areas that are also of deep interest. I mentioned two of them early on. One of them is um, your background in dealing with men's issues specifically. I'd be very interested in, in, in uh, dialoguing with you, if you'd be willing. And another area that would be really uh, an interesting piece for me would be for our to dialogue together uh, about uh, high sensitivity and how that manifests in a world that is uh, moving at such a fast pace all of the time. Um, and it's not unrelated to what we've been talking about. How does that sound to you? If we might have you back as a guest again in the future, if you're willing, uh, to discuss some 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 further topics in the spirit that we have today. Yes, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Even though uh, I mean, um, we are a little bit scratched on the surface about of, of <laughs> holistic medicine, yeah. but uh, I think it's good to have some 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 basic yeah. some basics before to get into to details. Yes. But uh, it's good to, I, I think it's good to know that holistic means always, yeah. for me, is, is to, mm -hmm. to see everything, mm -hmm. to see all sides, mm -hmm. and then to meditate uh, mm -hmm. the, the outcome. You know? yes. and yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's what, I really, what I really love about my profession now, mm -hmm. that I have these opportunities to 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 again and again to to bring people forward by by this by this kind of, of broad view mm -hmm. and essential essentialized you know mm -hmm. work and uh, I think this this is this seems to be quite quite uh, two different things mm -hmm. something being broad and mm -hmm. something being essential mm -hmm. but I think in the, in the end, it's it's the same, mm -hmm. and that's 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 what I what I find is is, is really fascinating about about uh, the kind of the, the kind of quality of work I um, I, I do some sometimes, it, and, and of course it, I can only do this when my clients my patients are with me. 
Yes. Or I, I so, somehow I invite them with me, you know, on on a boat on a river. And <laughs> if we don't row both, we, we will have a I'll have a hard time, <laughs> and we won't reach there where we want. So we we must find out, you know, where where I want where is the where is the goal, you know. So, so, yeah. I very much appreciate that last image. I've been really honored to be in the boat with you today, Tomas. I, I always am. I really appreciate your being willing to, to share your boat with all of us today and, and to have me join you. I'm very grateful. I do take seriously what you're saying in terms of looking at holistic medicine and dentistry, that, that, that when you come back, assuming that's something you would be willing to do, that we can, we can add layers to this in conversation. And I want you to know that I feel like that everything that we've spoken of today, which is near and dear to you in terms of your own discipline, professionally as a dentist, is completely relevant to, to the work that's at hand for those of us that work as physicians and as psychologists and as I, I work as a recovery coach. Um, for any of us that work in the domain of recovery, it's the very same uh, approach, just dealing with slightly different content. And even then there's a lot of overlap. So I would love to, to uh, uh, fill out perspectives of holistic medicine and dentistry as you feel comfortable so that we can fill that in. Uh, we've kind of created a foundation today. It went in some interesting ways that really are unique for this podcast series and I think highly valuable. And it really took, uh, it really took you being present, Tomas. I'm really grateful for you to, to join us today. I really very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I would like to say, is, you know, uh, recovery is 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 a is a phase of of uh, you know when people get sick and and slowly slowly uh, get back into the, their health. You know, mm -hmm. is it, recovery is is a very very incredibly important thing. You know, uh, the therapy is something, or the you know the the, like the, the the physical work, but what what to do to um, to make it stay, you know, to to bring it in in, in into the world. There might be another another issue. We might have talked talked about is is the labyrinth. I'm a real fan of labyrinths, you know. Mm -hmm. So the the recovery means to be if you get into the labyrinth in the, the center. Mm -hmm. And there you you get to understand something very important. Then you you go all the way out again. Mm -hmm. There's no way different. And this is this is re recovery, mm -hmm. and this is you know integration mm -hmm. to you know things to bring things mm -hmm. to to bring wisdom you found in the center of the labyrinth of your personal labyrinth to bring it out mm -hmm. all the way into the world and. Yeah. And then it it helps you, but it also will will alter your surroundings, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a good word that we're finishing where we started talking about making a difference in the world. You know, uh, we finish every podcast by by making a note about hope. And if there's one thing that has been throughout our conversation today for me, Tomas, it is that there's hope for uh, embracing what we're talking about in terms of holistic health and recovery, embracing that as a comprehensive lifestyle. And that not only is there hope for that, but there's hope for bringing that out of the labyrinth into the world and helping to heal the world when it is in so much need of this kind of breadth and depth. So I want to thank you for that. Next week, we'll be following up, actually, Tomas. I'll be following up in a podcast. Odie will be back with me next week, and we'll be looking at restoring hope and specifically for those who are in recovery. And I'll be referring back to our, our conversation today, I'm sure of it. Let me ask uh, those that are our participants today that have been viewing, if you have any questions after today's podcast, you're welcome to write me at my uh, 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 website, just bobweathers.com. And if it's something for Tomas, I'll be sure to forward any comments or questions that you have directly to Tomas in Switzerland. 
Tomas, I'm very honored to have you with, uh, with us today. I'm completely respectful of the fact that English is your second language and you're so incredibly articulate in English. I, I hope it's okay if I say that, that Tomas writes poetry and he writes it in English. <laughs> he writes better poetry in English than most people that have English as a first language, that's for sure. So for your willingness to join us today and bring your wisdom, um, and to be so eloquent in English is a real gift. As I sometimes joke with you, Tomas, I would be in real trouble if we had to speak German. So I really do thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's a real generosity for you to be with us from Switzerland. And I hope that you can join us again, Tomas. Yeah, thank you for the, to having the opportunity to join you and to give uh, a little bit of, of what I've learned and uh, into here. and. Um, I would be happy to 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 be, be with you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I want to thank all of our participants for joining us today with Dr. Tomas Rudy. And I wish all of you a good week. And we'll plan to see you next Wednesday at our regular time. Take care and goodbye to you, Tomas. Bye-bye. <laughs>